Hi, I'm Tracy Wilson. I run Courtesy Desk and Turntable Report. I wanted to make a little video to tell a bit about what I do, why I do it, and why my shop is a little bit different than others, besides the whole being mostly online. Uh, so yeah, I'm Tracy. It's really nice to meet you. Welcome to my headquarters and my home. Um, I started collecting records in the early 80s. The Go-Go's were my first record ever purchased with my own money. I worked at Flipside Records in Popton Lakes, New Jersey. Uh, I was the indie music buyer there for almost five or six years, I think. And then I moved to Seattle and I worked at CZ Records. Moved to Seattle just in time to see grunge die. Great timing on my behalf. Then I moved back to the East Coast. And at the time I was in a band called Dahlia Seed. We we're second wave emo, post-hardcore band that were active also for about five years. Uh, and then when our band broke up, I started working at Pier Platters in Hoboken, New Jersey, um, another sort of legendary record store uh, on the East Coast. And um, when that store closed its doors forever, I moved into the distribution side of music. And I spent the next almost 18 years in indie music distribution, uh, working with some of the best record labels all genres from around the world. Um, I worked at Caroline Distribution. I worked at Fontana. I helped found um, ILC, which was sort of in the ashes of Lumberjack and Mordem Distribution. Unfortunately, that didn't work out and it was honestly traumatic enough that I left the music industry for 10 years. But you cannot take a music fanatic out as a record collector. So even though I wasn't working necessarily like in the distribution world I grew up in. Uh, I was still playing in music. I started a band called Positive No with my husband. So I've basically been in bands for the last 30 or so years. And then um, I also had my own record label called Little Black Cloud Records. Uh, I kept myself busy in an all-female DJ collective group called Cherry Bomb. Uh, I've been writing in independent publications about music also for the last 30 years. So uh, not only have I been collecting records for most of my life, I've also been in the independent music industry, sort of advocating uh, for new artists for over 34 years. Um, so yes, that does make me old, but it also makes me a music fanatic lifer um, this isn't just some sort of like passing whim. This is something I've truly dedicated my whole life to. So uh, right before the pandemic started, I began a newsletter called Turntable Report, where I started to um, highlight the records I was listening to in relatively near time. It comes out and it's still coming out every two weeks-ish. And um, I don't ask to be solicited from record labels or bands. I try to keep it more like a fan experience. So the things I'm writing about isn't sort of peer pressured from the music community. It's not, um, words are being put into my mouth. I'm not describing records in ways that um, maybe anybody even wants me to describe something as. Um, I try to use my own language to talk about the records that I love um, rather than try to stick to some sort of like industry standard that is expected of me. So um, sometimes I write about records much after they later than they come out just because I'm discovering them later. Um, so while it makes me a little bit um, behind the time, sometimes I will have like a new release three weeks after it came out or four weeks. It might be that not only did I not get a promo of it because I'm not asking for anybody to send me free music. Um, I wait for a record to come out, spend time with it, and if I really believe in it, then I carry it in the shop. So the store is highly curated. It's uh, music that I genuinely believe in, all kinds of music from around the world. So where it may not make sense, I'm not dedicated to just metal or hardcore or uh, world music, which is such a ginormous torn term that doesn't really mean anything if you say just world music, but um, it's a little of everything. It's really based about what I truly think is excellent music that I want others to know about 
and uh, if you really like it and I stock it, hopefully you'll buy it from me. So I've been doing Turntable Report now for almost three years. And somewhere along the way, friends started asking me where to find some of the records I was writing about, especially records from, uh, I don't know, Japan, uh, France, Germany, Italy. And so I began importing things here and there. And the record store has been slowly growing ever since. I had zero expectation of ever starting a record store, but here I am. Courtesy Desk basically supports the records that I write about in Turntable Report. And this year I also started a radio show. So I'm also every two weeks playing music that mostly I stock, but there's also a lot of things sprinkled in that are just things that uh, maybe are only digital only releases or cassettes or CDs. And I mostly just sell records in my store, but I still want to be honest to support the things that I really am excited about. So um, the radio show and turntable report is a really nice opportunity to be able to talk about music that I'm not stocking, but I still am really excited to share with the world and um, hopefully my enthusiasm will be contagious as ultimately, um, while it would be nice you buy music from me, I want to help out music and musicians that I believe in and record labels and whether you buy it from me or the band directly or the record label, um, I think you know we all need to be trying to find ways to support the music industry, especially the independent music industry, best we can. And this is sort of my small way of doing so. So uh, I have new records coming in almost every day now. It used to be maybe once every week or two, but um, now it's grown so much that records truly are coming in. Uh, almost every day. And today, for instance, um, we have the Terra Pines record, which you might be able to hear playing in the background. Um, the record is called Downbeats, and it's on False Peak Records. I don't think there are very many stores in America who are carrying this record. Um, this Brisbane Australian band is one that I think is really special. It's uh, I'm sort of a sucker for heavy music that's also melodic. And um, their harmonies and tension are, are really unique and I think deeply moving. So I grabbed a couple copies and they've sold out pretty quickly. I think I only have two copies left in stock now. Um, so I'm going to try to do these videos semi-regularly, uh, talk a little bit about things that are coming in, um, records that are coming in um, in the relative near future. Um, because UPS and the Postal Service are kind of not very dependable. Um, I try not to give firm dates on when things will be here because I, I just, I'm tired of being disappointed. I don't want anyone else to feel disappointed if I say I'm going to have something on a certain day and it's not there. So I tend to only announce records when they're actually in my hands. I know they're in one piece, they're not too banged up, and then I'll put them online to sell. Um, I'll have details for how to join up for my newsletter and um, what my store address is. And uh, I think that'll do it. I have rambled on long enough. So thanks for listening and thank you for supporting my shop so far as many of you have. I really genuinely appreciate it.